Friends, it's a holiday weekend. Yay! None of us have a friend with a cottage. Boo! It's uh, on this, this is the first weekend that people, the first traditional weekend, you go to your cottage, you get it ready for the summer, but none of us have friends. So we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, on short notice, we have a guest preacher tonight, and his name is Matteo Calesi. I will be explaining uh, who he is. But needless to say, uh, he is a wonderful friend of our, of our church, and he's preached here many, many times. Uh, just a wonderful, godly man, and I'll tell you about him uh, after we have our worship time. How about you stand up with me? We have Ben Hughes in the middle, the guy in the middle on, with the guitar, Sarah Victoria, and Ben are leading tonight. Yay! Yay! And others. Yay! Holy Spirit, you are so welcome to be here. Friends, our prayer team, we're just meeting already. And if I can summarize the, the pictures that the prayer team had, it was that God is doing his best to get here quickly tonight <laughs> and has gifts for people tonight. That's sort of the summary of the pictures. Two different people, I was one of them, had pictures of angels ascending and descending tonight. I saw them coming down from heaven as fast as they could on a water slide. Like that's how urgent they were trying to get to this meeting to just be amongst us. And so, Father, if your angels are in this room right now, we welcome you to send them. We welcome any kind of influence that you would like to bring so that we can be meeting with you tonight and having an experience with you tonight. And Daddy, this is, this is Friday. We don't have to be here. But we've chosen to be here tonight. And we bless your presence. Those of you that are watching on the internet right now, just God bless you for joining us tonight. And we're praying that you'll have an amazing, amazing experience with, the, uh, with your father tonight. God would meet you. God would be very personal for you as well. And so, Father, for all those that watch, we bless the Holy Spirit to come to your room come to your office, your car, sitting in a park, wherever you are, that God would meet you tonight. So, Daddy, we welcome you. Come and be with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, you are very welcome to get out of your chair, come and worship at the front, uh, just be in God's presence tonight. Would that be all right? Let's worship.
of darkness, you fill me with peace. Give of mercy on my hell in time.
Yeah.
Surely keep your promise. 
about in one of the stanzas the songs about waiting and just listening to the father so I'd just like you to just close your eyes and let your heavenly father who's good and who loves you who's kind who's extravagant just let him speak to you right now maybe you need peace in your heart in some area of your life welcome him to come and say, Daddy, what do I need to know? Going through a tough time, what do I need to know? I need some wisdom. What do I need to know? And just let his voice come. And you may hear with your ears. You may see with your eyes. You may know with your heart. God speaks all different ways but he loves to communicate his heart to us. We're encouraged in the scriptures to call out to God to ask for wisdom. James especially talks about that in his book, is if we need wisdom, no better person to go to than our Father in Heaven. So Daddy, thank you that you communicate. Thank you that you're not silent. Thank you that you want to be involved in our lives. Thank you, Father. If you're in this room right now and you've never connected with Jesus, I have some good news for you. The Bible tells us in the most famous verse in the world, famous verse in the Bible in the world, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world and gave his only son to die for us. And the summary of the scriptures is that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for the sins of the world. Yep. Not just a few, but the world. Correct? So that means if you've never begun a relationship with Jesus, the hard part has already been done. That Jesus has already paid for your sin. And sin is one of those words that nobody likes. <laughs> and yet it's a reality. Sin is the things that we do that go against God go against others, but especially go against God. Sin is the things that we say that go against the heart of God. And most damning of all sins are those things that we think that go against the heart of God. And the worst of the worst of the worst sins is to think that you're okay the way you are and you don't need God. And the good news is that Jesus has already died on the cross for us. God so loved the world that he gave his son and that he died for us. And why did he die for us? Well, the good news is so that we can live with him. That's the good news. I've had the privilege of being with several people when they pass from life into eternity. And I, of the people who are conscious because I've been with some people who are in a coma and they turn a machine off. But with the people who are conscious as they have their last breath, almost always they see something at the last second. Their eyes open, they smile, and it's like they know that they're about to travel into eternity in a, in a second. And the Bible says in a twinkling of an eye, so faster than you can blink. You're there, and they're not fearful at all. They're full of, oh, my. <gasps> they just got a glimpse. Heaven opened, then they're off they go. And they're happy that they chose Jesus. They know in that moment, it's true, it's true, it's true. Heaven's waiting for us who choose Jesus. And so if you're in this room and you've never chosen Jesus, the good news is Jesus has already 
paid the passage, if I can say it like that. He's paid the penalty. And sin is what separates us from God. And Jesus paid that. And if you're in this room and you've never given your life to Jesus, that's the best choice you can make, is to give your life to Jesus. I'm going to say a prayer that I'm going to encourage everyone to say along with me. And those of you that have already chosen to become followers of Jesus, you can say this, saying, yep, I remember saying that one. For me, I was eight the first time I really connected with Jesus and figured it out for myself. Eight. I remember crying at a kids' church meeting. Made sense. I knew that I would have eternal life, eternity with God. And I made that choice when I was eight. It was a very emotional experience for me. I remember that. And I don't think the church, I know the church wasn't this deep. It was maybe like five rows. <laughs> and I remember walking to the front and just meeting the pastor. And it was, it was a wonderful time. And God would like to meet with you tonight. It's not that he's at the front. But he wants to come and visit you. So how about we say this prayer. And if you're choosing to give your life to Jesus tonight, I'd like you to repeat these little words with me as well. So why don't you just close your eyes and begin to connect with your Father in heaven who saw you from eternity past. He looked into the future and he saw you and he said, you're worth dying for. He saw that about the person sitting on your right and your left in front of you, behind you. When God saw us, he knew that he had to ask his son to do a drastic thing, and that was to come and live amongst us and die for us. So say this with me, Jesus, I believe that, that you love me. You've always loved me. And you've already paid my price. Jesus has already died for my sins. So I can, at any moment, step into eternity. I can say yes to you at any time. And my sins will be forgiven. And I'm choosing to make that time now. I invite Jesus to be a part of my life. To forgive me for all of my sins. The things that I've said. The things that I've done. The things that I've thought. I choose Jesus. Jesus, come in. Be active in my life. Give me a new heart. Give me a new mind. Lead me and guide me for the rest of my days. Today I become a follower of you. Help me to live like you. Help me to think like you. Help me to speak like you. This is my choice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I always like these kind of prayers because it, it, it gives an opportunity for those of you who are already followers to say, yeah, that's what I did, that's what I believe, that's, that's, that's who I am. And it gives an opportunity for those of you that are just beginning to put all the pieces to the puzzle together about God's love for you to say, I'd like to start that journey. And I'm wondering if there's people that said that prayer with me and are just tonight starting that journey with Jesus. If that's you, can I get you just to wave your hand and say, that's me? Because I would love to pray with you. I know this is a bold thing to put your hand up in front of all sorts of people. Is there anyone in the room? I can't see everyone just because of the way the lights are. So you have to really wave if that's you. Well, I don't see anyone waving. But if you're here and you're a little shy of waving, you need to talk to me after the meeting. Would that be all right? Say yes. Yes, very good. As we were worshiping tonight, I was reminded that a friend of mine was supposed to be here tonight. His name's Andrew Brunson. And if you've been a part of our church for a while, you may know about Andrew. Andrew, we just finished this week, um, yesterday, having a group of pastors from around the world that are part of a network of which this church is in called Partners in Harvest. And we have an American friend named Andrew Brunson, who for 23 years has been a pastor in Turkey. 
And you remember in October, there was a, a failed coup to take over the government. And it may or may not have been a legitimate thing, or it may have been a government-inspired thing to take more control. So who knows? But in the wake of that, tens of thousands of people were arrested as potential spies and all these different kind of things. Media people were put in jail. Uh, professors were put in jail. And my pastor friend, Andrew, was put in jail. And he's been in jail since October for being a, an American spy. Uh, the previous 23 years, he was fine, <laughs> caring for the poor, loving refugees, which is what he's been doing for 23 years. But that week, he was put in jail as being a spy. This week, the president of Turkey was in Washington and met with President Trump. And while they were there, both the president and the vice president uh, confronted the president of Turkey to say, let this guy go. And so nothing has happened yet. But when the president of America asks you to do him a favor, often there's millions of dollars in stake somewhere along the line, contracts and all sorts of different kind of things. So I have no idea what happened, but I know that on Fox News, uh, it was the in, the, in their webpage, it was the lead item reporting on the press conference was Trump talks to Aragon about American prisoner. And here's what the scriptures say, Matthew chapter 5, in the Beatitudes. It says this, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you. How many are you? I'm a you. Anyone else a you? Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. If people say evil about you because of you, you deserve it. <laughs> Correct? But if they say evil against you because of God, well, that's a different story. Then the promises of God kick in. And here's what it says. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. I don't know that we understand how significant the rewards of God are. And there's all sorts of rewards that kick in when we get to heaven. I, I just turned 60 two weeks ago. Yay, yay. So I, I don't know how long I'm going to have, another 20 years or so, who knows. I've been nice to my mom, so I think I've earned that bonus 10 years. Uh, but... I'm going to be in heaven for a lot longer than I am on planet Earth. And so this life is good, but those of us that are getting a little older, uh, we're starting to be a little bit more anticipatory. Is that the right word? Anticipating heaven more than we are caring about Earth. And so I'm in that category. I really am spending more time than I've ever spent before just thinking about what heaven is going to be like. And this passage says that if people are against you because of Jesus, be happy about it. Rejoice, be glad, because God's keeping track, he's keeping score, and your reward in heaven will be a great reward. I know I have friends in Toronto that are insulted, that have difficulty in their places of work because they're followers of Jesus. And it's not that they even say anything. It's what they, they don't say. They don't participate in the gossip. They don't participate in the, in the sexual jokes. They don't participate in all sorts of things. And because they don't participate in their workplace, in their school, they're right away, you're different, and they're persecuted. It happens in Toronto. And if you're in that, if you have been, in the last month or so, persecuted because of your Christian faith, can I just get you to stand up and just want to pray for you? If that's been happening. Again, not persecuted because of you being you, but because of you being a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Well, friends, there's a number of those that are standing up. So if you're near one of these people, how about you just move over and put your hand on their shoulder? Or... Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come. Welcome you to come. And we just speak that, that heaven is watching. Your Father in heaven has been noticing what's going on. 
and he sees, and he's keeping score, he's keeping track. And even though it seems maybe right now that it's tough, you have a great reward, the Bible says. Rejoice. Be glad. Your Father's with you. He knows what's going on. And so, Daddy, we do ask that you would give grace. You would help each of these people with whatever kind of pressure is there, persecution, insults. Father, lift the, the weight of those words off them. Lift off the shame, lift off the stress, lift off the guilt, lift off the uh, whatever the lies are that Satan says. Lift those off these people right now. And may they be full of your grace, full of your peace. May your heart know that God's with you. Your daddy's with you. Holy Spirit, would you come and bless these people today? Bless these people today, Father. We
change the words to I love you this song that uh, two of our worship leaders wrote it doesn't get (laughs) more meaningful than for us to just declare our love for the father we bless you daddy we just do love you so much you reached down you saw us you saved us from our sins and on top of that you gave us the Holy Spirit to live with us forever Your blessings are just constant. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. Amen.